Okay, I am. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I will start here human resource planning. Uh, the Ignu Indira Gandhi National Open University has given me the TS7, that is your human resource planning for hospitality and tourism department or hospitality and tourism division. So, I will uh, start from uh, this uh, human resource planning. So, I think the slide is coming out. I, I, uh, are you getting my slides? Is, is it visible? Uh, hello, is it visible? Yep. Okay, is it visible, the slide? Hello, Kabiru. Hello. Hello. Slides are visible, slides are visible. Yes, sir, visible. Okay. Uh, Hello, so sir. First of all, uh, the, uh, we will start from the human resource class. Yes, yes, tell me. So, first of all, we will uh, you know, uh, start up from, from the human resource planning. As you all know that uh, human resource planning is very much important function in almost all uh, industries or in all, almost all uh, corporate functions. And it is one of the most uh, significant department, which actually um, helps you uh, to, you know, the plan the resources and the plan and to give give you the input, and uh, so that uh, your uh, desired results will be come out. So first of all, we need to uh, find it out what is the uh, you know definition of uh, human resource uh, development or human resource planning. The definition is. It is, it is a set of systematic and planned activities designed by an organization to provide its members with the necessary skills to meet the current and future job demands. Okay. Did you get my point? The thing is that we need to first of all, uh, you know, get understood that the definition of human resource development or human resource uh, management, HRM, that is called the HRM or HR, uh, human resource development or HRD. So what is that? Now it is a uh, systematic or it is a, it is a strategy. It is a systematic, very, uh, you know, organized manner uh, activities which has been planned to and which has been designed by the organization to provide its members with the necessary skills or the necessary resources to meet the current and the future job demands. For an example, when you plan for, uh, uh, for an example, for an example, when you plan something, to do for a you know uh, 100 people or 200 people or to manage a company or to manage a corporate houses you need the resources you need the resources in the different terms uh, resources like you know you required uh, machine you required materials and apart from that you require main that main is called your resources okay so that resources you need to be planned because if you are not planning the resources in a uh, organized manner or a systematic manner, what will happen? Uh, uh, your your job or your uh, your your task will be definitely comes into a hurdle. So that's why the uh, human resource planning or the human resource development is very much required in the present situation or in the present market. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, suppose uh, in the future if you will be a manager or if you will be a leader in the organization at that time you will have a different task to be performed at a different times or uh, you know you have multiple tasks to be performed so at that time you will always uh, search for the different uh, manpowers or the different resources the resources in terms of your manpowers so uh, you you need to utilize that uh, manpowers or you need to utilize that resources so how you will utilize so you you need to utilize in a different different job demands so for that you need to have a particular department or a particular uh, function that is called your human resource planning so as the name suggests human resources so uh, there are so many resources in this uh, on, in this world and uh, out of that human resource is one of the most important and most uh, tangible form of uh, uh, resources which you need at every moment to run your or uh, to operate your organization if you want to operate if you not operate uh, your organization 
the organization will not give you the desired output okay so that, that's why the main machine and materials are the three important resources that every company or every organization or every corporate houses nowadays is highly prioritizing these things so the human resource is out of that uh, resource which you always required to get the desired result so the definition of the human resource planning or the definition of human resource development is it is a systematic planning process or it is a systematic or it is a, it is an organized uh, activities in which you have designed to provide the members with the necessary knowledge skills uh, so that your current and the future coming jobs can be performed okay so we'll go to the next slide uh, what are the emergence of the human resource planning why why there is a uh, there is an emerging uh, need of your uh, of this particular kind of resources why why what is the reason behind it the reason behind is that uh, the first reason is that nowadays that there are so many tasks are coming so many work is coming nowadays people are very multitasking people are very multi working and they are working in a multi multi clients environment so that you know uh, uh, for that reason there are uh, so many resources we require in every day basis and apart from that uh, employees need to be extend beyond the training classroom so that is also another uh, important criteria and sometimes it includes coaching sometimes includes group work or it's a group formations like in uh, you know conflict resolution or the problem solving and uh, employee development sometimes it is new need to you know training and development sometimes it is also need to have a career development so these are the few reasons or the few criteria on which there is a emerging plan for the human resource or the emerging plan for the human resource development okay if you are not planning for the human resource resources keeping in eye the lot of uh, things to do every day basis a lot of things uh, you need to uh, you know uh, prioritize in every day basis because company always wants a lot of outputs in a very short period of time because uh, due to the competitive age you need to be uh, very uh, keen on uh, you know or you need to be very sharp on performing the uh, various kinds of teams uh, tasks within a very limited times so that is another point of emerging emerging nature of the human resource planning so nowadays in, in human resource is very very required and it is an emerging also in in not only in the indian and in developing countries or uh, even in the developed countries because human resource will guide you for a better output it will also guide you for the better result and it will also make the employees uh, more uh, you know product, uh, productivity and it will give you the more output and it will help you to uh, make a group work formation so that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, with the help of uh, human resource uh, uh, planned human resource you can uh, you can you can devise a group and that group can actually meet a very high demanding task and that group also uh, can help you to face the different challenges or that group also can help you to uh, you know solve the different kinds of problems coming out to the companies or uh, coming out to the uh, you know your corporates and also at the same time you, you know uh, human uh, resources are uh, your strength your, uh, your your you know they are your power so you need to uh, make them uh, develop we need to take care of their growth so uh, training and development is also another part of uh, this this emerging nature of the hu human resource and also uh, uh, you know when the employees work uh, for in a multitask uh, tasking environment at the same time he also look for his career development so career growth and development is also very much essential uh, in the emerging nature of the human resource planning okay so uh, we'll uh, we'll go to the next slides. Uh, so uh, are you getting my points? If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Okay. Hello. 
you have any doubts uh, students you have any doubts you can ask me so i think you are uh, you you are uh, seeing my the uh, seeing my slides so we'll go to the next slide okay so um, what is the relation between the hrm and hrd so there is a two words normally comes it out what is hrm and hrd okay so normally uh, hrm is called the human resource management uh, which uh, which which you know involves many functions and human resource development is only a part of that function so uh, hrm is a broad umbrella okay so in that broad umbrella the hrd comes out okay so hrd only specifies uh, the development or the growth and development not only in the terms of employees but also in terms of your company or but also in terms of your firm but also in terms of your your entire department so human resource hr is a very very uh, you know big umbrella or uh, it, it it has a lot of functions and the, the functions i will let you i will i will let you understand in the later part of this slides so uh, first of all you need to understand what is the difference hrm and the hr thing so difference is that hrm is a broad umbrella and hr hrd is a sub that hrm and hrm involves or hrm comprises of many functions without these functions <coughs> your company uh, or your organizations will you know come to the standstill and hrd is a part of that hrm hrd specifies the uh, one particular task that is called your development growth and development but hrm performs many tasks um, or many it has many functions it is multitasking by nature but hrd is very single tasking by nature okay so that is the <coughs> sorry that is the difference between <clears throat> hrm and hrd okay so uh, we need to uh, find it out uh, what are the various functions of the hrm okay when you talk about the hrm hrm is a very complex process okay? and it is it is a broad umbrella and all the all the organizations comes under this hrm because without the hrm your organization looks very very you know incomplete looks very void actually okay looks very very incomplete so uh, without these functions uh, the organization cannot run so that's why <coughs> sorry <coughs> hrm plays a pivotal role hrm plays in a pivotal role in the success of an, any organizations and the uh, leader behind this hrm should be very strategic by nature you know, very proactive by nature because these functions required a lot of uh, you know uh, leadership qualities uh, uh, required uh, your uh, planned uh, strategic or uh, decision making this uh, you know you cannot run that uh, run your organization so that's why it should be uh, you know uh, it should be remembered that uh, the hrm is a very very you know uh, complex uh, uh, it's a very it's a complicated process so what are the various uh, functions now first is planning human resource planning because uh, without the planning you cannot uh, run the organization so planning is one of the management managerial uh, <clears throat> functions so um, hrm also comes under that managerial function so human resource planning is the first function okay then second point is equal em employment opportunity so what is that equal employment opportunity without 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 discriminating the gender or without the biasing by of the gender the the, the uh, hrm should give equal employment opportunities to all the males and females and other uh, structural body of the society okay so that is also another important function equal then next is staffing staffing what is that staffing is uh, as i have already told you staffing is more uh, important functions of the hrm you know uh, segment because without the without your staff without your uh, manpower without your employees you cannot run the show in your organization so that's why staffing is a very 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 significant or uh, extremely important uh, process that every organization goes through so uh, starting includes your recruitment selection and there are so many other functions are also involved with that starting then next is uh, compensation and benefits 
yes it is very much important when you are going to join an organization and uh, the hr department or the human resource department or hrm department always before uh, you know uh, when you go for the interview and you selected for the that um, particular positions so you always have the rights to ask what are the various compensation and benefits that uh, uh, the organization is going to offer you in terms of your uh, in terms of your work okay or in terms of your uh, uh, services because the company will get you the company will derive the service from you and in terms of that uh, your uh, company or the organization will give you the salary or the remuneration on monthly basis so compensation and benefits is also an important part of uh, the hrm department so without the benefits and compensation hrm uh, hrm is actually you may call it it's, it's incomplete then next is your health security yes it is also very much important because when you work in a organization and again so example uh, in the organization when you select the people uh, to do something so at that time you need to consider their health and their uh, work workplace and their security and their occupational health. so all these things uh, normally you know uh, consider nowadays uh, you know uh, in 21st century the human resource management is a bit uh, you know kind of uh, uh, digitalized or it may be you know everybody wants to be in a um, uh, health bubble or it's a kind of a uh, employee and employee well-being so health and security comes under that so then next is your human resource development yes i have told you that uh, hrm in, in under the underneath of the hrm human resource development is also another soft topic that development so development uh, in terms of your career development top development in terms of your the profit maximization development in terms of your what the organization uh, is going to give you and uh, what the employee is you know written back to the uh, organization so that development needs to be carried out on every day basis not even every day basis even monthly basis so that the training and development is a part of this uh, hrm okay so these are the uh, six to seven uh, particular uh, points you need to be remember okay so we'll go to the next slide. Mm. Uh, what are the HRM secondary HRM functions? The, uh, the uh, um, previous slides was called the primary functions. So these are called the secondary uh, HRM functions. Apart from the primary functions, uh, every HRM has uh, some kind of secondary HRM functions. That means apart from that uh, primary purpose, uh, the HRM department uh, is going to perform some kind of secondary functions, which is also very important. That means here you should do that uh, taking care of the organization, taking care of the job, uh, preparing the job design, preparing the job description, uh, job enrichment, and uh, PA system like performance appraisal systems and research and development or management information systems or sometimes you may call it a, as a research and information system these are the uh, secondary functions that particular hrm department uh, within their uh, employees they need to do it so you also need to know what are the various secondary hrm functions is performed or prepared to make the organization healthy and they make the employees more uh, you know directed towards to perform their work on daily basis because if the employees will be motivated the output will be also uh, you know uh, enriched or the output will be also more so that's why there are so many uh, there are few secondary functions that the hrm uh, the hr uh, department is going to perform on uh, um, a daily basis so that the organization as well as the employees can be successful in doing or in achieving their goal okay so then uh, hrd functions what are the various hrd functions yes it is also important uh, uh, 
uh, we have uh, uh, we have seen the HRM function. What are the HRD functions? What are that? HRD functions are the training and development. I have already briefed you the training and development, organization and development, and career development. HRD function is uh, uh, twofold. I mean, it's a two pronged approach. One approach is towards to your organization, and another approach is towards to your uh, you know employee. So it is an uh, two approach. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Any problem? Do you have any doubts? Basir, is you sample? Kabiru. Okay. So, uh, are you getting my points? Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. We are getting you. Are you? Yes. yes okay. 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 No issue. We did. Okay. 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 Okay, I think Hamza has joined now. Hamza, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah. Yes, sir. Okay, no issue. So, uh, training and development. Yeah, you should know training and development plays an important part of the uh, uh, important part in any organization, or if maybe you know, uh, it, 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 it is one of the most uh, significant. Uh, uh functions training and development you know everyone needs to be trained everyone uh, uh, should be get trained so that their uh, knowledge can be enhanced they can be more skilled they can uh, more they can get aware of the things and so that their development be you know uh, uh, development can be reflected in their uh, uh, in their nature also in their you know in their daily life also that uh, development can also help uh, in their personal front as well as the organizational front okay so training and development uh, is uh, in nowadays in everywhere in most of the european countries even in the asian countries even in the african countries most of the developing and developed countries training and development is uh, is highly prioritized and uh, uh, there are so many, uh, you know, cost is involved or the uh, regional government or the various uh, other uh, departments uh, like, uh, you know, corporate, like your company. And they are spending a lot of money to uh, make the employees more trained uh, of a particular uh, department of, um, and uh, so that their development can be happen because um, company works or the organization wants to be mm, uh, to be their employees be in the forefront or in their in, in, in pioneer in getting things on or getting uh, things uh, in a multiple way so that uh, training and development is essential and when we uh, think about the training and development uh, 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 we have uh, two approach it's employee approach and organizational approach in the same time when we uh, impart the training uh, to the employees, uh, employees also get developed and their career also get promoted and the career is also sharpened. In the same time, the organizational, uh, you know, uh, organizational development is also happens. So organize, organization develops in terms of uh, profit maximization, organization brand image, organization has a good positioning in the market organization go for a you know a segmentation approach in the market organization can sell their product in a better way there are so many mm, mm, you know uh, benefits comes out uh, when the organization development happens so that's why uh, organizational development training and development is very very required otherwise you can you can you cannot uh, you know uh, you cannot be a leader in the market because in the nowadays in the 21st century you know cutthroat competitions and you know the competitive training and development is also regarded as a competitive advantage you can you can check the you can you can uh, compete with your rivalry through this training and development so because training and development makes you uh, more knowledgeable more skilled okay so we'll go to the next slide Just 
organization and development the process what is the organization and development as i described you is the process of improving an organization's effectiveness and i as i have told you members well being through the application of a behavioral science concept focuses on both micro and macro levels and hrd plays the role of a change agent okay so human resource development when the development uh, uh, name is attached to it the development is actually a catalyst it is a change agent okay it change the behavior it change the mentality it change the awareness level of the uh, training the person who is going to be trained or the, the, to whom the training is going to be impacted so hrd plays the role of change agent so hrd when the hrd plays the role of change agent human resource planning is uh, makes a Uh, plays a very very decisive role, and if this decisive roles emphasize both in macro level and micro level. Okay, so that's why it is a kind of process, and if this process improves the organization's well-being, as I have told you, organization's effectiveness. That means the efficiency of the organization increases. It is it is enhanced, and the employees' well-being is also you know enhanced. so that's why organizational development plays a pivotal role it plays a central role in the human resource management okay <clears throat> the next is career development as i have already told you ongoing process by which individual progress through series of changes until they achieve their personal level of maximum achievement what is the career development what do you what do you how do you define career development the career development uh, it's a kind of phase Uh, it's a kind of uh, stage where that every individual uh, passes through a changing agent that changing agent uh, uh, you know uh, uh, change uh, uh, radically the behavioral aspects the knowledge level the awareness level so that the employees or the staff is get ready to face the challenge for the future so that is called your career development and the career development also involves the two sub points that is your career planning and the career management what is the career planning suppose uh, after 12th or 10th or maybe after graduation you have uh, something in your mind something in your uh, mind that kind of plan it is i will do the uh, higher studies or i will uh, jump to work in a professional uh, setup or whether you will go for uh, you know some kind of uh, you know some kind of freelancing kind of uh, activity so that kind of uh, thinking in your mind is your career planning what you intend to do after uh, your uh, you know when you are developed uh, and when your behavioral uh, uh, or decision uh, skill is mature so at that time you always uh, need to plan how i can plan for my career in which way i will plan for my career so that i will get a better result or i will be get fixed in my life so that is called that is your career planning and that career planning comes under the career management so um, that entire process is called your career management okay i mean your planning process your strategizing process you need to be Mm, you know you need to be very uh, organizing things you need to be directing some kind of uh, activities so and you need to be control your uh, you know control from your financial front control your from social front so controlling is also kind of a management management uh, function so that also comes under your career management so career planning and career management is also very required in the career development okay so uh, what are the various critical uh, hrd issues when we you know as i have told you this uh, this this is you know uh, hello hello am i audible yeah you are One, yeah, you are you are yeah, yeah, okay 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 you are we are with you we are okay so yeah so uh, mm, uh, Uh, you know, uh, I have told you that uh, it's kind of uh, you know HRM and HRD. It's a very kind of you know complex process. 
so in during that complex process you will face a lot of uh, you know issues uh, a lot of challenges because with all these issues and lot of challenges you cannot uh, you know uh, get the things done so what are the various uh, uh, challenges comes or the issues now my the strategic management and hrd the supervisors or the leadership roles which of the kind of uh, uh, issues and organizational structure or organizational hierarchy is sometimes sometimes it, you know uh, create some kind of issues so in as a deal leader you need to uh, find it out or you need to be um, very uh, very much uh, you know alert are very much uh, aware of the issues and challenges because when you perform a lot of uh, uh, challenging jobs or a lot of uh, challenging procedures at that time automatically from the external sources and the internal sources you will get a lot of issues challenges so you need to be very much uh, developed or you need to be very much uh, you know uh, kind of uh, mm. uh, articulate to perform uh the on the various kinds of issues and challenges that issues and challenges is normally comes into your, uh, that hrt uh, process okay then we'll go to uh, the next uh, slide what is this strategic management how it has been uh, get along with this hrt process strategic management aims to ensure organizational effectiveness for the foreseeable future maximizing profit as i have told you in the next 3 to 5 years okay so strategic management is a is you can you can call it uh, how it has been uh, involved with hrd it is a kind of hrd dream so hrd people are the 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 resources which are uh, get along with this strategic management they have a particular dream to follow or to dream to achieve the kind some kind of objectives some kind of purpose so that their scope will be enlarged their scope will be enriched so strategic management always have a purpose the organization have the good effectiveness and good efficiency for the future unpredictable challenges or the unpredictable issues okay so that's why it is called strategic management so you need to be strategized Uh, how you will get strategic when you are uh, when you will be get fully developed how you can be get fully developed when the particular kind of a training okay particular kind of training will be imparted and it will be enhance your knowledge and skills at that time you will be more developed otherwise you cannot develop okay so that's why strategic management is very very extremely involved with the hrt because So when strategic management is from the organizational based, and HRD is also organizational based, based but HRD always have a two approach. It has employees, and it has same time it has organization. Okay, so strategic management always have a purpose to make your organizations to be more developed to face the future unpredictable nature. Okay. then uh, next uh, point is hrd aims to get managers and workers ready for the new product procedures and materials i think it's i have already been i have already explained you these uh, two sentences hrd aims to get managers because the future leaders uh, you know when they comes into this hrd uh, uh, domain of knowledge or the hrd spectrum so they needs to be get ready how they can be get ready they can be get ready uh, through the uh, training and development so that's a constant training and development is imparted to make the leaders make the managers make the supervisors to get ready for the new challenging process the new challenging process in the terms of new products when they launch a new products the managers or the leaders they need to be compete with other products or other companies products because the market is so vast market is so tremendous that Uh, you need to be you know um, very very uh, sharp by nature so that or uh, very very competitive by nature so that uh, the other companies other products cannot dominate your product okay so that's why the strategic management particular term has been created and at it and it has been an involved with hrt so to get uh, hrt aims to get managers and workers ready for new products and the procedures and also the materials 
Nowadays, in the 21st century, there are so many procedures because process is very important. As the procedure, uh, procedures or process is very important. Input, your process, then output. So what kind of process you implement, it, it depends upon the nature of the leaders or nature of the managers. Because manager has the knowledge, manager has skill, leader is, you know, strategized. So what kind of process is he is going to be implement or he is going to be incorporate so that desired output will come out and it will make the organization more successful in terms of product, in terms of process, in terms of services. Okay. So did you get my point? So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go to the next uh, uh, slides. What is the supervisor's rules or what is their uh, uh, leader's role in HRD or what is the manager's role? or it may be called the supervisor's role in HRD. Implements HRD programs and procedures, okay. On the job training, or that you can also call it as an OGT, coaching, mentoring, and counseling, career and employee development, and frontline participant in HRD. But a supervisor, a supervisor also you can call it as a, you know, uh, your, in HRD you can call it as a leader, or your, or in the organizational hierarchy, the, the first uh, point or single point of contact what his uh, responsibility? He 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 sees the HR department or he looks at the HR department in in many ways. HR in many ways. I mean, you know, he sees uh, uh, or he look at the um, uh, HRD to be uh, performed in a very effective way or in a very efficient way, and he should implement the HRD uh, various HRD programs and procedures in a very effectively and eff efficiently. And on the job training is also a part of uh, this, uh, uh, you know, part of this uh, HRD role. And coaching, mentoring, and counseling, it's very, very important. These three words, coaching, mentoring, and counseling, you, uh, it's very, very important. Without this, your organization or your HRD is incomplete. Okay. Mentoring, coaching, and counseling. Everywhere, every step you need to that. Mentoring, counseling. Because what happens if you mentor your employees or you counsel your employees or you coach in such a way that their role can be enhanced, their their uh, uh, thought can be illustrated, their thought can be very pivotal because human uh, thinking should be in broad-minded in organizations. Okay, so otherwise, what will happen? The organization will be lose its uh, moral values. Okay. Apart from the product process and procedures, organizations also need some uh, morality, some kind of uh, uh, values upon which the organization is stand. And uh, for that, coaching, mentoring, and counseling on behalf of the leader is required because uh, it, it, it creates a motivating factor among the employees it creates a uh, happiness it creates the the, the staffs or the uh, human resources or the main powers the, your everyday employees get delighted so coaching mentoring and counseling creates a, a kind of psychological uh, well-being among the employees then career and employee development as i have already discussed you and a frontline participant yes each other always wants the employees should be you know front runner, not the back benches. Um, so they should, it, it always think in the pioneering concept or the, you know, their staffs or their employees should always uh, uh, have a, a frontline participant. Okay. So that is, that is the, uh, the uh, roles and responsibilities of the leaders. Okay. <clears throat> then organizational structure of HRD departments or the HRM human resource planning department okay just a minute yeah? okay. Hello. Okay. 
then next is organizational structure or organizational hierarchy of the department organ what is the organization hierarchy organization because the management is three steps top management level uh, or you can also upper management also and the middle level and the lower level okay top down approach and bottom down approach there is a two approach in the every every organization so organization structure or organization hierarchy of each of the departments uh, has uh, uh, different different structure to different different uh, uh, company it depends on your company size or organization size kind of your industry and kind of maturity okay and uh, it depends upon uh, the employee strength also okay so uh, for an example if you pl plan a organization structure of a five star hotel in your uh, in your locality you can see you will uh, you know it also uh, depends on the kind of whether it is a five star hotel whether it is a four star hotel okay of whether it is a three star hotel that means your uh, uh, companies or the hotel size or then uh, kind of uh, uh, industry i mean whether it is a service industry whether it is a manufacturing industry whether it is a is other kind of other uh, other other industry or it may be a, some some kind of academics and all okay so uh, the industry kind of industry and uh, kind of uh, your uh, size also matters okay so organizational structure is organizational structure is uh, depends on uh, the uh, top level management and the upper level management for an example uh, in a five star hotel the organizational structure of the hrt department is like this uh, the first comes uh, your uh, human resource manager or uh, then comes your human resource executive or hr executive then comes your uh, human resource assistant hr assistants then comes your uh, human resource uh, trainees or apprentices so these are these are the few, uh, a, a small example of the organizational structure of the hrd departments if you if you look at the big companies or the big uh, hotel uh, they have a chain hotel you have uh, like a vice president hrd or human resource then uh, your general manager human resource then associate general manager human resource then hr human resource manager hr manager then assistant human resource manager then you have hr executive then hr trainees or apprentices okay so it depends upon how on the strength of your employees okay <clears throat> see this is the uh, this is a sample as i told you this is a sample hrd jobs jobs and roles uh, like executive or managers hr hr strategic advisor in some companies there are some hr hr strategic advisor hr system designer or i, I mean the developer i mean the uh, the web developer the uh, entire hr web developer and the organization change agent i mean your uh, uh, your change uh, your catalyst and organization design consultant learning program specialist i mean your training and, and development manager this is called learning program specialist your instructor or facilitator i mean suppose you have a lab they, they have a lab instructor or lab facilitator individual development and career counselor there is also a separate uh, department uh, sub department that is uh, headed by the career counselor and performance consultant as also you may call it as a coach and uh, researcher those who are doing their researches they are also called the researchers they are also uh, involved with this hrd uh, roles what are the hr's strategic role employees as organization assets i have told you in the beginning from the beginning employees are the organization assets so they are not the liabilities the organization should always think in that perspective that employees are their assets without this their manpowers or without their employees the entire organization will will you know will get the bad image in the market okay so organization should take extra steps to make their employees happy and make their employees more uh, you know, productivity towards to their work by providing or by offering many uh, benefits many you know uh, uh, a good career development 
or a kind of in a regular interval of training and development so that their assets also will be you know get enriched in the future then next is driving business strategies okay so uh, hr human resources always have a, a purpose in their mind or uh, in their uh, lifeline like you know it has some it has a driving nature how the business will be get expanded okay how the business will from one place to other regions it can be diversified so that business diversification is also the driving nature of the strategic of the human resource okay then spanning organizational function okay. organizational function should be spanned it should not be it should be decentralized spanned means it should be decentralized it should be you know uh, it should be and the uh, task should be expertized or the task should be uh, divided among the experts so that that is the decentralization of the work HRT deli uh, deliverables, I mean your performance, your capacity building or skill enhancement, problem solving, I have, I have told you, and organizing change and development. These are the HRT normally offers to their uh, employees or even to the organization, so like uh, performance, performance uh, in terms of uh, the profit maximization and in terms of your uh, career development. Capacity building, capacity building is in terms of, uh, you know, skill development is required because uh, knowledge should be gained and knowledge should be enhanced and uh, problem solving or consult, consultation. Consultation is one of the important aspects of the any human resource uh, uh, function. So um, consultation or the outsourcing is also uh, required. Then, uh, uh, then the organs will change and development. So these are the few deli uh, deliverables that human resource development is always uh, uh, keen on uh, performing. <clears throat> the next is your <clears throat> strategic HRD. What is that? What is strategic HRD? What, what do you mean by the strategic HRD? How the HRD is strategized? How it has the quality of strategic? Why the HRD? is strategic i have told you strategic is a, a kind of uh, uh, broad things that uh, every organization needs to be uh, imbibed in their uh, uh, many functions not only in the human resource but also in other uh, departments like production department manufacturing your uh, you know your uh, decision making skill uh, decision making uh, department or sometimes also uh, research and development so strategic is a kind of a, a, a broad uh, um, thing which integrates uh, the organization's uh, organization skills with the employee skills or organization's uh, values uh, with the employee's uh, uh, mind so that is called your strategic HRD. how it is, it is integration of HRT with strategic formulation and implementation. See, the organization always uh, uh, always uh, looks for the implementation of strategic uh, thoughts or the strategic uh, decision making rules so that organization can diversify its business. Organization can uh, compete with other organization. Organization can also uh, look for the future changes or the future changes in terms of product, in terms of process, and also in terms of material. So that's why every employee should be strategized. Uh, there should be a strategic thinking in everyone's mind. The long-term view of HR policy. See, strategy is not a short-term by nature. It has the pragmatic values. It is always a long-term policies or it is it is based on a long-term decision-making uh, skill. So that's why the HR uh, policy, the policy formulation, or when the human resource policy formulation is done in the beginning of the organization, uh, when the organization starts, every department has their policy. So at that time, strategic policy is a long-term view, also a long-term uh, dream of uh, organization. Then horizontal integration among HR function. Yes, there are two kinds of integrations. One is called vertical vertical integration, 
another one is called horizontal integration these two kinds of integration is required for the successful day-to-day uh, -day, mm, function of the human resource so horizontal integration uh, should be there and this this is this is again fueled by the strategic role if it is not fueled by the strategic roles then horizontal integration cannot be success and if the horizontal in integration is not success your most of your hr functions fails okay similarly vertical integration with the corporate strategy yes vertical integration with the corporate strategy means your organization strategic role should be complete with other same organization in the market so that is called your vertical integration okay and uh, again, again it is a queer competitive advantage i have told you in the beginning that uh, it's it, it's required for your competitive advantage because uh, every employee should be strategized and test there there is a strategic value of uh, human resource uh, so that it it it, it, it will be considered as a competitive advantage because in the 21st century due to the you know intense rivalry or due to the intense uh, competition in the market competitive advantage that every organization is now aspiring so that strategic is always uh, involved with the hrd department okay so we'll go to the next slide mm. <clears throat> see uh, there is a particular uh, uh, table a uh, particular chart is showing the different uh, uh, roles hr roles and, uh, deli uh, you know deliverables or kind of a uh, kind of outcome is given okay so uh, first one is your uh, uh, management of shr that deliverable or outcome is executing corporation and corporate strategy and the metaphor metaphor means your change or change agent strategic partner and what is the queer activity it's aligning the hr and the business strategy that means it is it is you know connecting in the hr with the business strategy okay then the next is your management of farm infrastructure i have told you infrastructure uh, you know uh, is um, it's very very important part to make the hr uh, more successful without the infrastructure even the organization cannot stand and even the organization cannot think of their um, procedures, process, their materials, and all. So that should be a, a form uh, of infrastructure, and which delivers or which uh, the outcome is building an efficient infrastructure. Means it helps in build, uh, you know, uh, it builds the entire uh, organization in such a way that all the strategic rules has been get uh, involved with the human resource development and it is the what is the change change is your administrative export that means it it gains the uh, administrative yeah. knowledge or the administrative yeah. skills okay what is the core activity what is the actually central part or the central function re-engineering the organization process what is re-engineering the organization process means the uh, every organization has their own organizing process when the infrastructure is left implemented or built or it is uh, when it when it when it provide some kind of administrative uh, outcomes or administrative knowledge then it is re-engineered that means it is reset or it is uh, rebuilt to in, in a better way so that organization can achieve its square objective okay the next is management of employee contributions what is that management of employee contributions every organization has their employees which normally uh, you know uh, uh, they have a particular kind of a group or a particular kind of uh, uh, you know uh, kind of uh, um, activities group activities which they want to contribute okay what is the outcome increasing employee commitment and capability it increases the employees commitment Commitment and capabilities also to uh, employee uh, um, qualities that every organization uh, wish to have that uh, in their daily operations. Without the commitment, uh, 
uh, how the commitment will come and uh, when uh, the employees will uh, employees will be get motivated okay so what is the change the employee champions so there is a call word the champion employee becomes champion in every aspects so he becomes a multitasked uh, employee so if you know, what is the activity so what is the you know, central theme the providing resources to the employees it provide the resources to the employees the next is uh, management of transformation or change okay so innovation or transformation is required innovation is uh, innovation and creation or creativity skills among the employees uh, can transform their skills their normal skills their no, their traditional knowledge to a better uh, better way so that that's why organizational organization can be renew in a uh, you know in a better way so it is the outcome is change agent and the central theme is managing the transformation and change so this is this, this is a particular uh, sample copy of uh, you know hr rules uh, different hr rules uh, uh, that every organization is going to be perform or every organization is going to be offer on daily basis whether it might be a hospitality so manufacturing or any corporate kind of uh, organizations okay just hold on <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay. <clears throat> what are the uh, uh, what are the various importance of human resources? Human resources, as I have told you in my previous slides, human resources are an important part of your value chain. Okay, they can be unique and thus a source of your core competence in an organization. And if a core competence is related to HR, then HR can contribute to the competitive advantage. What are the various things? You know, that the importance of human resources. First one is your human resources are an important part of your value chain. In an organization value chain, human resource is your, uh, apart from your infrastructure, apart from other intangible resources, human resource is very, very significant. Okay. It, 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 will, it will save your organization. It, it, is, it is the building block of your, for your organization. Okay. They can be very unique and thus it's a square competence of the organization. It is the core of your organization it is the essence of your organization okay and uh, it it helps to create that image brand image it helps to create the brand positioning it helps to create uh, the competitive advantage in the market so that's why human resource uh, significant is you know uh, prioritized in many organizations okay then what is the uh, strategic analysis of HR or what is the strategic purpose? People related strategies may be important to new strategies. For example, a change in the way the organization does business. In today's technologically complex business world, analysis of existing human resource is important in order to determine what options are available. Then third point is the network of people within an organization and the relations with the people can be an important part of strategy. Okay, so what is the strategic analysis? Why 
why we'll go for a strategic analysis of HR? Yes, we need to have a strategic analysis of HR because we need to re-engineer the HR human resource uh, things so that our purpose will be fulfilled. Okay. So first thing is in, H, uh, in the strategic analysis of HR, people are most important part. Okay. People are the change agent. Uh, and when these those people would get trained and when they do that, those people will be developed, they will be helped in, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, it will be, they will create a change. They will innovate the things. So their traditional business will be transferred to a creativity of knowledge or it, they will be, uh, you know, uh, they will create a, uh, another spectrum of knowledge so that uh, the organization will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, plan for a new product. Organization will be planned for the new process also. And so that they will also plan to have some uh, new materials. They will bring some new materials. So that's the first point. First point is people is your more uh, people is your just like an asset. And second is uh, you know nowadays technology has been get uh, incorporated in the strategic analysis of HR. I uh, said the traditional HR was the people to people business. Okay, but nowadays the technology has. Uh, uh, has been you know get uh, incorporated so it has made the uh, business more complex and at the same time it is facilitating the uh, process so uh, the uh, strategic analysis says that uh, you can have uh, uh, you know uh, human resource uh, in a very uh, technologically um, driven business or it has diversified the uh, human resource uh, business to an upper level due to the technologically um, driven business or the, some kind of innovation okay and third one is the network of people within the organization okay the network of people in the traditional way and even in the modern way there are uh, uh, different uh, concept is coming here just wait. I don't अच्छा अच्छा हो हो ठीक अछि मु उठे क्लास रे अछि माने क्लास न मु आज छुट्टी अछि बट मारो तो ऑनलाइन क्लास चल छि फॉरेन स्टूडेंट के सहित मु काम सारे त से कहू जाओ कथा हो है ना हेलो हेलो डिड यू आर यू देयर आर यू ऑल देयर हेलो हेलो Hmm. Uh, yes, uh, well, yeah. I don't know if yeah. So I I, I just bit bit just one call came from uh, yeah yeah yeah. Sorry, sorry. sorry? You are you you need to ask some some questions. What do you think? Okay, sir. I said I don't know if I can ask a question. Okay, I'll continue. Huh? I will continue. I will continue. No issue. Okay. Uh, please. Yes, yes. You, you uh, ask, ask, an ask me the question of yeah. how HR con. Okay. Uh, what, what's your question? How the HR conducts? Okay, my question is: uh, uh, Can you please provide an example of how HR conduct a skill a skills gap? Yeah, a skills gap analysis to ensure oh, the skills development. Skills. Okay. 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 See. Uh, <clears throat> For an example, uh, 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 the, the tourism uh, sectors or even the hospitality sectors uh, nowadays uh, uh, they are uh, uh, through the human resource uh, department or through uh, the yes through the human resource department they are bringing um, the below poverty line students or the below poverty line um, people who are uh, below the poverty line and for an example like hospitality sectors 
uh, when they are into the food business i mean the street hawkers or the street food sellers those who are selling some snacks some kind of uh, small food items so what uh, they are doing i think in many countries uh, what they are doing they are uh, through the human resource uh, process they are uh, mapping the areas and they are bringing the those uh, people or those uh, uh, community residents and uh, uh, putting them into a classroom coaching or putting them or placing them into a um, into a good environment and giving them some kind of capacity building and skill development related course or skill skill development uh, skill development uh, related uh, small scratch course uh, regarding the food safety regarding how they will handle the uh, how they will prepare the food small food small kind of snacks how they will be uh, you know uh get interacted with the customers uh and uh, how they will be you know handle the customers so the small small uh, behavioral training is are imparted in many countries so that is uh, that is the job of the human resource uh, department to map the areas and to find it out how many participants or how many people or how many Uh, boys and girls are there are there in a particular areas and they are mapping their qualification they are day to day work activities they are family structure they are income they are they are occupation and after that they schedule or the design a, a short uh, term you know some kind of that they, they design a short term kind of uh, courses class courses so that uh, these people will be get uh, uh, knowledgeable or uh, they will be get aware of what they are actually providing to the customers so it is a particular kind of example that you may cite in in also. okay did you get my point hello yes sir yes sir noted sir i get the point sir. thank you yeah okay yeah okay 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 then okay thank you then uh, mm, I will go to the uh, next slide. Uh, uh, HR and sustainable competitive advantage. Yes, competitive advantage is nowadays uh, is it's it's a lifeline of uh, of every organization. And again, after that, sustainable sustainable competitive advantage. What is that sustainable competitive advantage? Sustainable competitive advantage means so what is sustainable? Sustainable means you need to be care for your future you need to be you need to need to care for you need to be look for your future generation so that is called your sustainable because uh, natural resources are depleting day by day due to the different pollution so different uh, resources uh, so that that's it's a very continuous process so as an hr uh, uh, employees or hr uh, department you should you should create a sustainable competitive advantage okay in many industries people are the most important factor in success that i have told you already okay advertising and creating development that is also another point laser and tourism management consulting hospitals and medical professions the adaptability of people to changing environments is an important skill and the ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the sustainable advantage okay so what is the sustainable competitive advantage and how the hr uh, rules the play to make the competitive advantage more sustainable so that is the main theme of this particular slide okay so as i have told you this uh, uh, you know um, people are the most important asset and their uh, success is the organization success so if they will be motivated the organization will be get more uh, result or more output okay so they are the change maker okay so they are the change agent actually so how the the competitive advantage will be helpful for uh, uh, a sustainable way how the each human research should should consider the competitive advantage in their product in their process in their materials 
okay then the sustainability will be achieved so how the sustainability will be achieved now through the proper publishing publishing uh, information through the proper advertisement through, through the proper creation of development or the proper innovation and proper creativity among the employees so that will be create a sustainability concept or the sustainability criteria for the competitive advantage and it is also very much uh, uh, achievable in the leisure and tourism also because tourism sustainability and tourism within the uh, united nations world tourism organization the sustainability development goal sdg that is the sdg sustainable development goal so sustainable development goal is always have a perspective for uh, people for the enhancement of the people to remove the poverty from the people to make uh, uh, them uh, more prioritized to make them more uh, you know enhanced so that comes under your sustainable development goal sdg so leisure and tourism is also part of that sustainable competitive advantage if your people will be more enhanced if their skills will be more enhanced if their knowledge will be more enhanced so they definitely they will create a mark in the competitive advantage to the other organization the market so they will definitely think of uh, you know they will be have a fear factor for your company's people because your people are more knowledgeable your people are more uh, skilled they have uh, they have a good capacity building uh, resources due to the hr okay then management consult consulting yes people um, have the capabilities of consulting and that consulting is related to the management so that's why it is called management consulting when people when your organizations people have the quality of management consulting then your competitive advantage will be more sustainable because at that time you cannot hire or you cannot outsource the third party from the market your your own people will be will be you know consult help in consulting or they will be consult for other product and process to the other organizations also so that is called your management consulting then hospitals and medical professions yes hospitals and medical professions even in the hospital and medical professions where there is a hr department they will be also more helpful creating a sustainable future the next is the adaptability of people to changing environments is an important skills i have told you the mmc and the environment uh, in the traditional environment and the 21st in, uh, century environment is a huge gap so in the 21st century the hr is always look for the sustainable or uh, hr is always looking for a sustainability concept so how this sustainability can be achieved it can be achieved through the adaptability of the people if the people if your people uh, because people is your, all your asset if your people will adapt the changes uh, people will adapt the um, new product new process or the new materials so definitely it will be an important skill and definitely it will create a sustainable competitive advantage okay the next is the ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable advantage the kind of ability or the kind of uh, you know uh, your competitors uh, the kind of uh, your competitors have the different different uh, uh, product different different uh, uh, process so ability to learn faster than your competitors is also a sustainable example of sustainable competitor that means you should be a pioneer in you should be in a front runner in uh, in capturing the knowledge and capturing the uh, the skills so that your uh, you you will be you know you will be front runner uh, compared to your competitors okay so that is called your sustainable competitive advantage we'll go to the next slide uh, challenges for hrt as i have told you changing workplace demographics competing in global economy <laughs> eliminating the skills gap need for lifelong learning and the need for organization learning these are the very important points you need to remember what are the various challenges for the so nowadays the traditional hrm or the traditional hrd and the today's 
HRM or HRD have a you know long gap. Uh, so that there is a huge gap. Okay. So in the previous, the demographics is you know only you know gender biased, and uh, sometimes it is uh, you know kind of uh, uh, it's very very clumsy a uh, workforce. But now it is a diversified workforce. You have uh, sometimes if you go to a uh, hotel in uh, if you if you go to uh, the hotels in the Middle East, I am giving an example. You will find a changing workforce. I mean, you have a diversified workforce. The people from India, people from Philippines, people from uh, African countries, people from uh, you know US, UK. You know, it's a multi-dimensional uh, workforce. I mean, the demographics is uh, is. Uh, you know, from different to different cultures, different to different uh, cultural backgrounds, uh, knowledge backgrounds, uh, educational backgrounds. You have, uh, you know, uh, income backgrounds. So the demographics is like that one. So that nowadays it is the diversified workforce demographics. Okay. So that is uh, that is the, that creates a huge challenge uh, uh, for the successful human resource uh, process and even the successful human resource planning. So that that is also another point you need to be remember that 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 is that issues also comes out for an example in a future if you if you you know kind of uh, if you will join any kind of human resource department in a multitasking organization so the organization catering to the different uh, uh, you know kind of uh, people from the different cultural background you have some kind of a diversified workforce okay the second point is competing in global economy see. The global economy is nowadays also, you know, uh, expanding. It is, uh, you know, tourism and if you if you if, if you will discuss about if you will see um, the tourism and hospitality sector is giving, you know, um, near about ten point something uh, to the global GDP. So your economy is diversified. Your economy is expanding, and uh, uh, the regional government uh, or the uh, the national government is also. Uh, putting pressure on the different uh, organizations, the different com uh, in the companies to create uh, 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 the global workforce and uh, to create the innovations because and because nowadays the technology has also uh, uh, make an important play by creating artificial intelligence, metaverse, all these things comes into the uh, global scenario. That, that's why the, the global economy is changing and it is also competing. So the uh, human resource development or human resource uh, uh, process needs to be, um, I mean, you know, uh, it needs to be very, very competitive by nature. Otherwise, it will be go back to the traditional way. If you go back to the traditional way when uh, there is no technology on and all, so again, you have, uh, uh, you will create a you know, loss to your organization. So that's why to keep abreast of this uh, cutthroat competition, so you need to be compete in, in a global economy structure. The next is eliminating the skills gap. As I told you, nowadays there is a huge gap, and it is the uh, daily task of the human resource development or the human resource uh, management to uh, reduce that gap. If you if you if you reduce that gap. Definitely, your organizational values will be again increased or enhanced. If you are not, if you are unable to eliminate that gap, then it is the same structure or it is the same uh, HRD as you have seen, you know, 20, 20 years back. Because the twenty first century, the gap the skills needs to be revamped. Skills needs to be enhanced. So this comes under your capacity building programs. So. Uh, small uh, your lower level steps and middle level managers they need to be skilled every day basis okay the next is a need for lifelong learning as you know that learning is in a continuous process so lifelong learning uh, is required uh, to make the uh, companies or to make the organizations more successful in terms of its product process or materials so uh, to provide them the lifelong learning to the every employees or the, to the every people, it is also a big challenge for the human resource development. The next is need for organizational learning. Yes, organizational learning is also required. 
who can provide the organizational uh, learning to the organization now i mean the top level managers so you need to design that kind of uh, uh, structure uh, so it is the job of uh, uh, the human resource department to make them learn uh, uh, on daily basis okay if they will not learn how the organization will be uh, you know uh, get success in the future so uh, there is there is there is both uh, required lifelong learning and organizational learning okay so that 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 uh, this learning phase or the, this this particular kind of uh, uh, learning uh, design should be uh, the challenge for the human resource development okay the next is <clears throat> competing in the global economy competing in the global economy it is the important points you need to, you need to be remembered uh, competition in the global economy uh, for every organization and what the human resource plays an important part of that global economy because when uh, we talk when we think about this human resource uh, the particular kind of human resource words in our mind so uh, and uh, we always think of uh, bringing new talent bringing new uh, technologies bringing new uh, you know uh, kind of resources to your existing pool of resources so that your the new uh, unique talent will give will 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 help to run your organization in a better way so that's a new technology the first point is new technologies so when you think of competing in the global economy the new technology is more important nowadays as you have already know artificial intelligence ai metaverse the 5g you know iot internet of things big data these are the new technology with the help of that new technology the organization or the companies in has received their uh, process and it is contributing the global economy it is increasing the global gdp also okay and need for more skilled and educated workers yes when you think about the new technology when the technology is coming into and implementing or incorporating the organization at that time we need to think of the people who needs to run their uh, run that technology to run that machine or to run that kind of uh, intelligence okay so we need to have more skilled and educated workers otherwise we cannot succeed you know by implementing that new technology again that new technology will be have a, uh, uh, in the future uh, if you will not uh, mapping the skilled staffs or the skilled manpower to the new technology what will happen that it will be again a, a create a burden for us okay the next is cultural sensitivity required what is the cultural sensitivity yes i have told you the multitasking organization or the i mean sorry in a multi dimensional organization the cultural sensitivity is required it, it cultural sensitivity brings a new talent new ideas new concept it it, it brings the uh, you know unique innovations so cultural sensitivity uh, helps to uh, you know grow your organization helps to develop your organization okay the next is your team involvement so team working is most important as you know that so to to be performed to be to be you know uh, to be alive in the competitive market team work is most important the team involvement whatever is it may be a small task or a, or or a large uh, or a big uh, big task or it's kind of a, a large group involvement at that time your team work is most important without that team work you cannot achieve that uh, particular kind of uh, diversified uh, business so big business is not now is a single entity it is it is diversified so team involvement is required from the primary level secondary level even in the tertiary level the next is problem solving this problem will arise you need to be solve that problem you know in the terms of your product the terms of your process in the terms of your materials then the communication skills horizontal communication and the vertical communication among the employees and employees and with the organization is required 
So that communication skills is also another challenging factor for the humanness of development to create that uh, economy, the global economy in a better way. If the communication fails, so you cannot achieve that uh, point or you cannot achieve that uh, success. Okay. So these are the uh, uh, few points as you, you need to remember how the competing, how to the HR need to be compete with the global to, the, to achieve the global economy. Okay. The next is uh, training and HRD process model. There is a model has been created uh, uh, how that uh, uh, we need to um, implement uh, that uh, model to um, map the or to uh, have uh, connect the training with the HRD. Because as I have told you, training is very, very important part. Okay. Now, without that uh, training and development and uh, your entire people will be get obsolete. Okay. So, uh, for that, you need to, uh, you know, create uh, a, a mapping of training and HRD. See, there is a particular word called assessment, design, implementation, and evaluation. These are the four steps. First step, assessment, design, implementation, and evaluation. When the assessment comes, assessment, assessment mean, means your uh, analysis, your investigation, assesses, assesses needs. When there is assesses needs, there is also a call for a prioritized needs. If there is no prioritized, there is, then there is no assessment. If there is no assessment, there is no training. If there is no training, there is no design. Okay. If there is no design, then how you will get things implemented? If it is not implemented, how you can evaluate? So it is a straight line process like assessment, design, implementation in evaluation okay this straight line process is the model of your hrt or model of your hrm okay assessment design and implementation when the assessment needs arises when there is a assess then there is a need for assessment when how the assesses comes now when there is a prioritize okay priority means when there is a necessity okay how the when the necessity is there then you need to have objectives okay so this point is your objectives if you have some purpose you have some aim or your purpose and objectives then the prioritize comes then these objectives is linked with evaluation we'll we'll go to that slides later on then define objectives then develop the lesson plan that means i have two objectives in my mind for an example to evaluate okay or to investigate the level of food safety knowledge among the street food hawker the first objective okay second objective is whether the level of food safety is correlated with their education background or not there are two objectives okay the so first objective and second objective. Did you get my point? I'm just citing an example. Okay. So these two objectives is have in my mind. So that is my objectives and that objectives create the prioritized. Okay. Then I will go for assessing or assessment. Then I will create the lesson plan. Lesson plan means I will create how I can achieve that objectives, whether I will I will tell them the simple how to I will tell them simply and by creating the awareness or I will bring them to the classroom and I will tell them or I will use the PPT slides to uh, make them sensitize about the food safety or whether I will give whether I will show them some clips video clips or whether I will show them some kind of audio clips. So that is my lesson plan. So I will develop that. Then develop or acquire the materials. Yes, I will. I will develop the materials. Whether it is a blackboard, whether it is a um, LCD projector, whether it is a, a you know kind of a video clips or all. So that is my materials. Okay, or the video clip links. Then select the trainer or headers. I will select the trainer. Suppose I will select myself as a trainer or I am myself as an instructor. 
then select methods and techniques as i have already told you select methods and techniques then schedule the program then i will schedule one a particular day or particular hour to make them sensitize about that program okay all these things comes under the delivery delivered hrd program of in our intervention okay then the objectives is evaluate uh, linked with evaluation i mean select evaluation criteria determine the evaluation design when the objective is fulfilled by these you know sub points like by the when the objective is uh, uh, deli uh, delivered through lesson plan to materials to the trainer to the methods and techniques or to the scheduled program then i will evaluate the objectives is evaluated so it is select evaluation criteria determining the design okay what is the evaluation criteria how i will evaluate how i will map their knowledge whether i will go for a scale development i mean it's a five point scale development or a seven point scale development or how i mean the scale is like whether you know many things whether you do not know uh, uh, many things that is a scale from you know 0 to 5 okay so uh, then determining the evaluation design then conduct evaluation of program or intervention then interpret the results then in the last i will find the results or i will like, interpret the results so that is the entire model of your hrd process in this way the training uh, or uh, training is investigated or training is assessed okay did you get my point any doubt hello no sir it is you get my point okay 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 very good very good okay okay so now we'll go to the next slide amja musa bhuja hello amja What are the high performance organizations? I mean, you know, yes, in sir. terms of your uh, uh, designs, in terms of your yes, tell me. You want you want to say something? Yes, sir, I think he unmute himself uh, unknowingly. I don't. Okay, who? Me. One okay, hour. Okay, noise, not noise. You you. Yeah, yeah, you mute yourself. You mute yourself. Okay. So next is uh, high performance organizations uh, like uh, design components. If uh, in the uh, normal the high performance organizations, they have uh, uh, design component components like people. They have uh, uh, good decision systems. They have good human resources. They have a good structure. They have good values and culture. Okay. so these are the design com components and uh, traditional organizations like a narrow expertise you know uh, it's, a, it's 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 a kind of uh, expertise which you require because uh, when we are our expertise is not broad in mind or in uh, you know i mean it's not uh, 
broad in structure, then it creates problem. Then rock the individuals, uh, then centralized, then nest is closed, and another one is called standardized selection. And routine training, routine training is very much important. Normally, it happens in most of the uh, traditional organization. They go for a routine training and job based pay. You know, some uh, traditional organization they and go for uh, and the work and pay systems like that is called job based pay. Narrow and repetitive jobs. Very jobs are very boredom. Like even tasks are very repetitive by nature. Tall, rigid hierarchies. Hierarchy is a bit kind of uh, imbalanced. Okay. Then functional departments, like functional departments means uh, in apart from the human resource department, there are some other functional departments. Then promote compliances, compliances also it's created and it is creates a deviation. Then routine behaviors, behavior is very routinized. So these are the these are the kind of traditional organizations that uh, you know few decades back uh, we are uh, seeing we are uh, we are having this all kind of uh, traditional organization organizations uh, uh, necessary essentials then how do high performance organizations are get separated from the traditional organization how they are unique uh, they are unique in this way like they are they are having like a multi skill template i have told you they all all are multi skill i mean multi tasking people and they are dispersed they are not uh, Placed in one place, or they are they are not based in one place. One place they are dispersed. Okay, they are into the many places. So from the many places, they are getting many uh, new ideas. Okay, and they are very open. Open means they are they are very uh, innovative kind of uh, mind. They are open. The next is elastic job interviews. The interviews are very elastic, very uh, you know real time based. That is called the realistic. And continuous learning. The so nowadays high performance organizations they have a good quality of continuous learning. The learning is a continuous process for them. Then performance based pay. Yes, it, it is. It is one of the best qualities that are nowadays the high performance organizations are uh, acquiring. That is called performance based pay. I mean your pay structure is performance based, and job is enriched. It is also another quality. Okay. The next is flat, flexible hierarchies. Hierarchy is very flat. Very flexible. You have a long. Uh, you have a very flat uh, hierarchy, so that you are, you know, uh, if the hierarchy is very flat, you will have a good uh, uh, job. Uh, uh, you know, good job description, and you will have a uh, flexible uh, thinking, and you have a also flex flexible uh, time also. Then self-contained business. The business is self-contained. It is. It is not. Uh, Mm, you know, uh, it is not closed actually. It is self-contained. Promote the involvement. It's team and uh, building or the team and involvement is also required. And innovation and cooperation. As I have told you, high performance organizations nowadays are very innovative and very cooperative by nature. Okay. You can see uh, there is a uh, tree, human resource management tree. Like uh, how the, there are different kinds of functions are attached to the human resource uh, management. Okay, I think you, you can easily see that uh, human resource uh, management uh, functions. I mean, your uh, first one is your selection, uh, your recruitment, your uh, motivation, productivity, trade unions, trainings, reward systems, development, discipline, employment, legislation. So entire things comes on into the umbrella of human resource management. First one is selection, uh, recruitment, employee legislation, discipline, development. These are the sub points which you you will definitely know in the later. On. Okay, I will I will I will tell you what is the definition of selection, what is the definition of recruitment, how there is a discipline, how or why the, there is why there should be a dis discipline among the employees, why there's why the development is necessary, why the training is also very much important. Uh, how why the employees should be, have a good reward system how the trade unions is formed how the productivity um, emerges how the people should be motivated okay so uh, for the today i will finish up to this slide it's slide number 26 and the later on uh, for tomorrow we'll uh, discuss uh, from the uh, 26 slides okay is it fine hello uh, okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Hello. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so, so because it's already 4:45, so now in India, so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, yeah, 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 I, yeah, you, you, uh, I can hear you. Yeah, please tell me. Would you like? Would, would you like to say something? Uh, uh, I really Hello? Do appreciate Amja, this Amja. discussion. Amiru. Okay. How do you like? How do you like my 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 teaching method? Uh, so the teaching method. How do you, do, how do you like my teaching method? Is it fine? It's a pop, mom. It's, 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 it's a pop. Okay. Amja. Amja. It's okay. 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 No issue. No issue. No. No issue at all. Uh, from tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we'll start from the uh, another uh, slides. Okay. Till then, uh, bye bye. Take care. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. See you next. See you tomorrow for your practice. Thank you. 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 Hello.